Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organia's Puzzle Box. In today's video I would like to make an um, introduction to CloudForge 1.4.1. So this is a sort of a, you know, an update to the update that I've released recently. So this comes with three additional things. So the first one, uh, the most um, important addition is the procedural planet system that's been added. You can see the procedural planet behind me. And we also have planetary clouds above that planet. Now, this is still a work in progress. More updates will come through. Right now, the system is only, uh, you know, able to generate a few clouds above the planet, but they look quite quite good using the right settings. And it's very customizable. So I really wanted to sort of release that to you guys so you can experiment with and play around with. The next feature, which was uh, requested by multiple users, uh, we've got this cloud movement based on noise that's now available for all the static VDB clouds. So uh, I've added a tick box where basically you can tell it if you want it to the move or not by default it's set to off but you can now you know um, pretty much get any cloud to move or not to move um, and then the other feature is the cloud spawner is now able to generate clouds infinitely rather than a set amount so this is for people who want to just generate long scenes and have a lot of clouds that are just playing in the background for quite a while uh, this is going to be transformational i think for a lot of people because you're no longer limited to to do a calculation of how many clouds you can have you can just have as many as you'd like and it runs for as long as you'd like and it doesn't really stop so this is going to be quite useful for cinematics again a feature that was requested and it's been added now so these are the three main features and i just want to go through each of them just to show you guys how they function and how they how they work and yeah uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comment below and if you'd like to get your hands on the cloudforge uh be mindful that you'll get all the updates that are coming forward and this CloudForge is available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace, RStation, Gumroad and my own website as well So and Patreon as well. So uh, yeah, let's, um, let's take a look. Okay, let's have a look. So I am in CloudForge 1.4.1, and this is one of the level examples that I told you guys about. So this one in particular shows us the, uh, um, you know, the nighttime version of this, and we can have a look at opening new, you know, some other levels. Now what I've done is I've, I've worked on putting everything together in within the within the system. So no longer have we got like three different volumes and so on. They're actually you know, more centered within the folders. But if we go to the example maps, we've got volume one, two, and three to show off the clouds. We also have this general example where you can see the cloud movement, cloud spawner, the, this night example, and also the procedural planet. So if I go on to the cloud movement one, uh, we're obviously having a look at some clouds in here that are currently moving based on noise, and you can see how that's happening. And what's, uh, you know, part of the new feature for this is the fact that you can now just disable this with a click of a button right here where it says cloud movement. If you click it, the cloud will stop using the noise. And also by doing that, it's also going to improve the performance of the cloud rendering itself because it no longer has to actually push through for all this stuff as well. So that's a nice sort of thing because you could select multiple clouds in here and just say, right, we don't want any cloud movement on any of these or we want cloud movement on all of them. So this is going to be very important for you to be able to art direct your scene a lot better. Now in the next example, we're going to look at a cloud spawner, which is this one here. Now, what will you'll notice, a new additional to the, addition to this, is the infinite spawn tick box. What happens if you tick this box, it will basically ignore the amount and it will just continue generating clouds based on these sort of settings that you've got here, like how many, you know, what's the density multiplier, the spawn rate, the lifespan. So every every cloud will basically die after 15 seconds. This is very important because if you're going to, you know, create infinite clouds, then this is obviously going to tank your performance if these clouds survive for too long. Now, another thing, if we untick the box and we press play right now, you'll be able to see that five clouds will be created. So we've got cloud zero, one, two, three, four. So that, those are five clouds, and that's going to be basically be it. These clouds will no longer spawn, and these will die after about 15 seconds. That's how the cloud spawner used to work. Now, if we tick this box, this will ignore the amount. And if we press play, you'll notice that cloud zero, one, you know, two, three, four, and we'll keep going like this until basically the first cloud dies out. So after about 15 seconds of these clouds spawning, the first cloud will disappear, will die out in the scene, 
and then you, you you can you'll actually be able to notice now so you see it's gone above 16 17 18 and uh, very very soon cloud zero will start dying out again those are not actually they're not actually 15 seconds they're more like you know you can see it now actually cloud one two three you can see that how they're they're dying and new clouds are spawning in the background to replace them and this will just carry on forever based on the collection of clouds that you've used to uh, to put into the material and now let's have a look at the final addition that's been added to cloudforge 1.4.1 and that is the level procedural planet so in this particular update i've added the procedural planet that i've got on the unreal engine marketplace i've made it available within the cloudforge itself so you can play around with creating your own custom planets with cloud systems as well so we're going to double click the level and this is it over here it's quite an interesting uh, level as you can see we've got a planet a directional light and we've got some clouds over here now what's really interesting about this is the fact that we can move the directional light around and as you can see this is also affecting the clouds the atmosphere and the planet lighting the clouds themselves cast shadows upon each other and also the planet's surface in particular sort of, uh, you know, in, in depending on how close you are. So if I get closer here, you'll notice that I'm able to do that. Now, as you're noticing, there's, um, there's quite a bit of slicing happening around when I move. And this is to do with the fact that these clouds are being rendered at a quite low resolution right now. Now, some other cool things that you can do is if you select the volumetric cloud component, um, you can obviously uh, move these around, scale them up or down, and you know you can art direct your clouds and how you want them to look. You can put them in the twilight zone, for example, over here or lift them up over here and you can see how they're creating sort of shadow on the planet surface and how they're you know create they, they can actually combine with other cloud shapes so all of these are individual clouds that are being added into here uh, but what you can do you can also select the volumetric cloud component of the blueprint and you have settings such as the layer bottom altitude so you can eat up from 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 beneath uh, if you want to do that you can also decrease the layer height so you can make them I don't know for example uh, not as tall as what we're seeing them so that's really cool um, and again you can that this will allow you to follow this sort of curvature of the earth or the planet or whatever uh, so that's really cool and you know if we have a look over here onto the planet itself this is a procedural planet like I've said so there's loads of settings that you could uh, play around with and make this planet you know look a lot different than what we're seeing over the, you know from what we're seeing right now you can add so many different um sort of settings and and just textures and stuff that just makes it look so much more different and then you load up the clouds and you obviously um you can r direct them and put them wherever you'd like and you know change how this looks now what i would advise as a console command you can use the r volumetric render target set to zero and press enter i'm not going to do that because it's going to pretty much kill the video uh because it takes so much performance but if you want these clouds to look spectacular then that's what you need to do in order to push the numbers now i am going to uh basically uh give you guys a link which is this i'm going to put this link in the description there's a bunch of console commands down here that you could use to improve the uh, range of your clouds to make them look a lot better and there's a lot of comparisons that uh, you can see from epic where they show us exactly what you need to do in order to get the best out of this but yeah this is um, I, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, particular addition the procedural planet is now part of the cloud forge as well so you can just get the cloud forge and you get the procedural planet and you're able to place clouds around this particular planet does come with its own uh, cloud system as well in case you want to have a different kind of cloud uh, showing up which is definitely a lot more low res but you know it's um, it's something serviceable as well and the planet itself has the ability to rotate around other objects so if you put another i don't know object within the scene in here you could select that object and get the planet to rotate around it uh with on, an, on a, with a speed and an axis which you know pretty much like a planet would rotate around other massive objects or small objects or whatever you want to do uh, you can also add um uh like rings to the planet as well if you'd like to and again these are controllable for various different settings so overall i think a very nice addition to the cloud forge um, and i am aiming to work on this system uh, to the point where i can actually have a fully working dynamic cloud system at uh, you know high level quality around the whole planet so stay tuned for that as it's going to be part of the update to the cloud forge and I do hope you guys enjoyed that video. I hope you've uh, learned something and you, 
you know, like the new features. I'm going to be updating this again, uh, probably by the end of the month of uh, February with some more stuff. Let me know if you have any suggestions or if you'd like to see any, any things added. I am working on a weather system as well. So there's a lot of things coming to the CloudForge. I'm not trying to replace Ultra Dynamic Sky. I'm just trying to give an alternative for people that generally create cinematics. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, remember, if you want to have access to the CloudForge without actually, you know, paying uh, the full amount for it, just head on over to Patreon. It's available on my Patreon page for tier two and above. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep creating.